Welcome to the Google Forms 101 Basics Professional Development. We will go over how to create a Google Form. We will also go over the different types of questions you can use in a Google Form. And we will briefly show you how a Google Forms data will be reported to you. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that we are logged into our Google Drive. You will see I've created this folder as Google Drive Professional Development. We're going to start new, more, Google Forms. Once I click on that, it's going to open up a new tab, which will be our Google Form. So I'm going to create a title for my form. I will call this one Google Form PD for Professional Development and click OK. You'll notice that I have several selections that I can choose from for form settings. I, I can change that and it'll give me a little summary across the bar. And I expand it and I'll go back to the options. Right now I'm going to require an RSU 57 Massabesic School District login to view this form. If I click on that arrow, it gives me a warning that says, are you sure you want to make this accessible outside of your organization? I'm going to leave it. I'm also going to tell it to automatically collect the respondent's RSU57 district username. I'm also going to show a progress bar at the bottom of the form page. And I'm only going to allow one response per person, which means you must log in. I'm not going to shuffle the order of questions. This is the title of our form just like at the top you'll see the box for the questions let's start with the question title this will be question number one's title below that is the help text box if you had some additional information you needed to provide for the question this is where you would type it oops And then we're going to go down to the next box and choose the question type. For the question type, we're going to look at the text. This is going to be a short answer. Notice the small box. For each question, you will also have a paragraph text option, which we will go over. You will notice it is quite bigger. We will also have a multiple choice where we can have unlimited choices. We can also have check boxes, which would be check all that apply. We would also have a choose from a list. You could also use a scale from 1 to 5, 1 to 10. You could also have a grid where you would label each row and each column for them to choose from. You could also have your user uh, choose from a date answer or a time, or both. Let's start with text. Short answer, and we're going to use this box for uh, required question. So that means they have to answer it or the form will not be valid, will not be accepted. Notice the small box, and once I click add item, it's been added to the form. This is question number two's title. Here's our help text for question number two. And we're going to make this one a paragraph text box. Notice the larger box. It is a longer answer. If I click add item, I can go on to the next question. This is question number three. And for this one, we're going to choose multiple choice so you can see what it looks like. Here's our option number one. Uh, once I hit enter, it opens up option number two. We can always change each option for whatever answer choice we're looking for. And that can be unlimited. I'm just going to hit enter so you can see. Now we're going to add that. Now we're going to do question number four. My help text. Let's choose our question type. This will be the check boxes. Again, we can have multiple options and we can also change them when we want. 
we can have unlimited options notice I click done I can go back and I can see what the questions look like so then I'm gonna say add item we're gonna add question number five so we can see the next question type my help text for number five the next question type is gonna be choose from a list again unlimited options we can change them Then I'll hit enter so it'll add a couple more. Then I click done. That'll show you what you can choose from. So we'll add number six. My help. Now I get to choose the question type. This one will be a scale. So on a scale of one to ten, or one to five in this case. And what it's going to do is it's going to put several little bubbles to choose from for that scale. And you can change your numerical scale for whatever you would like. We'll make this one option five. All right, this is going to be question number seven, and we'll look at that question type as well. My help. We'll do a grid. And this is where you set up the rows. I'm just going to leave them labeled row one, row two, row three, and then column one, column two, column three, so we can see what the organization looks like. Then I'm going to click done. Now let's go look at what the questions are starting to look like. You'll notice each different question type has a different answer box. Let's view the live form. This is what it would look like if I were to give this form right now. Notice the title, and you'll see that it has my username in here because it is collecting the username data. Here's our different question types. Notice the size difference for the text box. There's the progress bar. So we'll close this out. And now I can change a confirmation page. Whenever they get done, this is the message they will see once they submit the form. And you can personalize this as the automatic response. We're going to say publish and show a public link to the form results. And you can allow responders to edit these responses after submitting. But I'm going to turn those off and we're going to send form. This makes the form official. This makes the form live. So once you begin to share the link for the form, it will have access directly to it. Now let's go up to the top and change the theme. Let's make it look pretty. We have several themes to choose from. This is the default that we see right now, our basic. We could customize that, or we could use some of the templates that they already have for us. As we scroll down, we'll see the different types of templates. Choose one that you like, and it will change the color based on that form for you. You could also use a old form or one that somebody shared with you. For this one, why not have fun at the fair? And then I'll send that form to make sure it saves it. And then I will click Done. The best part about Google Form is that once someone has submitted answers to the questions it gives us the data in a Google sheet you'll notice in my Google Drive it also says Google form PD but it has responses here's each of the questions the timestamp and the username that we collected those are hard to read because they're not wrapping I'm gonna click this top box on the left click format and we're gonna wrap the text so that it's easier to read so here is each question the answers would be in each column below that once they're submitted by a user. Quickly, let's go look and see what the form is going to look like when someone looks at it. Here's our live form. They would fill it in, answer the questions. Notice this one was our required question. Select each option. I'll put a Y in there. Put a no in there. I could choose as many of these or as few of these as I want. Choose from a list. Choose the scale. And 
fill this out as needed and then once I click submit notice here's my progress bar once I click submit it's automatically gonna tell me you can personalize this for an automatic response because that's what we said in the building of the form so I'll close this now I'm gonna go to my Google Drive and you will see the Google form professional development responses so we're gonna open that and you will see the time that it was done I just did these I could go in here and I could edit here's the answer to question number one the username which I had to remove so I could make this tutorial Then we have question number two's title and here's each of our answers that were chosen I'm sorry form and show summary of responses this is going to put it into a different way of looking at our data